guys, how's it going? So Aaron and I are out here in the new garden area. We're gonna be working on two different things. And this video is gonna probably span over the course of two days because today we wanna to work on installing drip tape to the front rectangle up there. So this is the one that's got the stock tanks and the tomatoes and all my vine crops. And we're going to finish drip tape up here so I can start planting some of this flowers I started from seed that are like languishing in their trays in our greenhouse. They need to be planted so bad. Um, so I'm hoping to do some of that tomorrow. And the reason I want to do that tomorrow is tonight, it's 94 is the high right today? 94? Yeah. And tomorrow's high is 66, which means we're going to have a huge windstorm tonight. Um, and we're supposed to get a half inch of rain tomorrow morning, which for us, like a half inch of rain, we get like, what, high end nine inches a year? Yeah. So that's a lot of rain for us. So anyway, I thought we would get the drip tape done today. Maybe I could plant tomorrow if it's not like too bad of a mess. Let me show you what we have going on. So Aaron's got all the supplies, I think. Oh yeah, who knows? <laughs> that we need. Hopefully. Yeah, and then what we're gonna do, we're starting back here because we are gonna tap into this zone right here. We've got a three quarter inch adapter and then we've got three quarter inch poly right here. So we'll tap into that and then we're going to run a line all the way down. Let me just walk down here. So this is the end of the vine area. And then there's the walkway. So we're gonna run that poly all the way down here. And then I brought some shovels. We'll kind of dig a little trench here and kind of pop it underneath the soil. Not very far though. Right here to this three quarter inch distribution. It's just the same black poly, three quarter inch. And then we're gonna be running drip tape to this whole area. We started the process, boy, how many weeks ago did we start the process? Two or three. At least three. Yeah, probably three. Feels like we're doing we it really have, slow. We didn't really have water to this space. We were kind of cobbling it from the other, from right. our, you know, previous land. That we never even used. We never ended up even we using we it. We thought we were. Anyway, so yeah, we only got water to this space last week. Anyway, so this is what it looks like. We're doing three rows of it every 10 inches and then there's 36 inches between. So I can do thickly planted stuff and then I'll have walkways in between each aisle. And you can get drip tape uh, with emitter holes every six inches or every 12 inches. I don't know, are there I any other options? You can get drip tape like every whatever inch you want practically. Uh -huh. There's a lot of different kinds. So Aaron did all the research on the drip tape and he ordered all the supplies and all of that. Like I didn't have to do any of that, bless you. I am not a researcher, I don't like to do stuff like that. Um, and this is going to be experimental for us. But the advantages are? The advantages are that it is good for low flow, so you can run a lot more of it, and it's also way less expensive. Um, like, if you were to use the regular stuff you get at Home Depot or whatever, like the half inch lines, the amount that you would need would be insane, and I think you'd run out of flow or pressure or whatever. Because look at this, we've got three lines. You've got three lines for every row. Um, it's a lot of feet. It would be so many feet of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's that's the rub. The interesting part about this, I'm gonna be tacking it down more, but when we initially put it out, all of these were straight and then like the heat and the wind happened. And so all of them are kind of like chaos out there. So I'm gonna tack them down a little more frequently. And I think it's just gonna kind of be like that until crops grow up and kind of shade them a little bit. Yeah. So we've got one, two, three, four runs of three done. And then we'll do four runs of three on this side as well. And then to accommodate the obelisk in the middle, we'll probably just do a run of two on either side of it so that everything is balanced. Not that it really matters in the end, probably, that it's balanced because it's gonna be a chaos of weeds and plants, hopefully. We also have the water running while we're out here so we can monitor the drip tube to make sure that we don't blow any more couplers. And I'm gonna be completely honest, I'm super not looking forward to the first part of this video. <laughs> The first part of this project, I don't really love like relish being out here in the powder and the heat um, running drip tape, but I do know that in the end I will be able to plant and that's the part that I'm excited about. So this is the weird part you guys, so we keep blowing, you know the, the poly keeps blowing off the couplers and we ha already have pressure reducers on there. So this, this part sucks, check this out. So we've got this 90 degree angle and, and you could probably do this with less fittings. Well, I guess this is the only extra fitting, but um, so we've got a 90 degree angle and then I had to, because this, what is this called? A pressure reducer? A pressure regulator. Uh, it's a 25 PSI pressure regulator. And it's, it's directional. The water can only go this way, so you can't put it in the other way, which means that it wouldn't line up with the threads. So I had to put an additional little coupler here and then 
this guy here. Why is stuff coming out of that? I don't know. It looks like it got jammed into the mud. Oh. I bet you, you know what? I bet you it was the windstorm. Oh. I bet you it blew Well, we can turn it junk. on and get junk out of it. But anyway, so we'll put our three quarter inch poly right there and then we'll be set. Yeah, we'll kind of run it in this uh, trench here. I'm shadowing it in this trench and we'll go meet it up with this line. Actually, we'll just run it right along with this right here. I'll just tack it down with the half inch all the way down so that we don't have a mess of tubes everywhere. Oh, can you turn on that zone just like for a moment? <laughs> okay. Just for a quick moment. Perfect. Oh, surprised. Thought that we'd for sure have a big mess. At some point we need to pick up all these oh, strings. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, you need a clamp. Can I hand you? Oh, you got it. I do that too. It's so not usually part of the routine. That's not going anywhere. So here's where we're at. We ran the three quarter inch tubing from the water access over there, right alongside the half inch tubing. So it looks pretty tidy. And then we trench just lightly. This tubing is just maybe like four inches underneath the pathway here. And then it comes back up. And then we used a three quarter inch T coupler and we took off this direction to the end of this rectangular, rectangular section and I uh, used duct tape. <laughs> so I just crimped the tubing and use duct tape because Home Depot didn't have the proper enders for the three quarter inch. So that'll work. And then we took off in this direction and I ended that with duct tape as well. And while we were at it, we went ahead and straightened up all these lines of drip tape. Let me show you. So that looks a lot better. I still need to tack them all down with landscape staples, but I want to make sure we don't run out of staples. I don't think I have enough to like stake each one of these down multiple times um, but they're gonna warp and kind of wobble a little bit in the heat i think that's just the nature of this type of plastic tubing and that's okay and you know it'll just do that until we start to get some growth out here to shade it a little bit uh, but i think it'll be better off now that we adjusted a tad yeah so i think what we're going to do is we're just going to measure figure out where the next one needs to go and then we will talk you through the whole process of how we adapt from three quarter inch poly to drip tape. So here's the drip tape first. The first thing we're gonna do is put the ender on it before we even lay it out. Um, so you wanna make sure there's the last emitter is right here. You need to have a little space of drip tape that doesn't have an emitter because the emitter gets in the way. And then there is a kind of thicker end and a skinny end. You wanna put the drip tape through the skinny end like that. And then you wanna fold it twice. And then you just squish the ender <laughs> over the fold like that. And it just kind of like snaps in place right there. So now we're gonna take the drip tape and lay it out before we connect it to the three quarter inch poly. So we've got the drip tape laid out kind of where we think 36 inches is, but I'm gonna go ahead and measure, yeah. So 36 inches is right about here on the poly. And then I'm gonna use this hole punch thing, which I don't think, Erin, you don't think this is the proper no, one. I don't think it is. But it works out pretty good um, when the poly is warm. It's pretty easy to punch a hole. So I'm just gonna punch one right into the side like that. And then this is the adapter, which looks way bigger than when you're- <laughs> I think I bought the wrong kind. Well, I think I used... bought a bigger type. I think, it, I think it works. Yeah. It works well. I'm just so used to dealing with quarter inch couplers. Anyway. The skinnier end pokes into the poly, like that. And then I'm gonna cut the drip tape just here with my Felcos. 
and then we kind of open it up like that and just slide it over just like a sleeve and you kind of push it up into this make sure that that's all the way let me pull that off so you can see it so it's kind of like barbed a little bit you push that up into like this little green thing <laughs> so technical <laughs> and then you kind of just screw this thing on and it just holds the drip tape now you do need to make sure that the emitters on the drip tape are facing up that is important so now the next one will go in 10 inches away from this and we'll do another run of three 10 inches apart and then we'll do 36 inch spacing between those that's really all there is to it runs of drip tape in this one rectangle. Uh, Aaron is turning on the water so we can kind of see how that's gonna work out. Um, but you might have noticed that it was taking two of us to unspool the drip tape. What happened? Let me show you. It really should be a lot easier than it was for us, but the um, cardboard ender fell off the bottom part so it kept wanting to unspool. And so we couldn't like put it on a rod and just pull it because it just would get all gobbed up on itself. So it was taking one of us to unspool it while the other one walked the distance with it. So I'm looking forward to being done with that spool. <laughs> and this ended up fitting perfectly. So I have 36 inches between each run of three, except for right here, there's 33 inches. But it made it all end up very balanced and really quite perfect in this area. And I can hear the water. It looks like there's a little bit dripping out. It might take a little while for the water to completely fill up this whole system and distribute properly um, to where it's like evenly coming out you can see like those little wet spots down there it's what i like to see i just want to see it in more areas than just this one and i'm using both the six inch spaced emitters and 12 inch space so like in the area where i'm planting the dahlias i'll use a 12 inch spacing um, and then for a few of the flowers i get really big um, but i'm going to be doing some corn and zinnias and then a bunch of other things up here um, that i just wanted more full coverage so we're going to probably do a troubleshoot the water make sure that it's like all evenly coming out Aaron, I do notice it coming out in more spots now. Anyway, uh, I just need to make sure after about an hour's time to see what the coverage looks like because I wanna know if I plant seeds in this area, am I gonna need to drag a hose out still to make sure that the seeds are thoroughly moistened uh, until they germinate, which won't be a big deal when it's so hot out because they'll sprout really quickly. Um, the stuff that I have that's already rooted and has root balls, this is perfect. I think this drip tape will work great. Yeah, see, I see it like it's, it's the best right here in the first one. And then it's starting in the second one and I see it starting in the third one there. So at this point today, we're just gonna be troubleshooting water. I actually thought I might get out here and plant a few seeds, even though we have a big storm coming through, it won't affect the seeds like it would tender plants. Um, and that way I can take advantage of the rain that's coming tomorrow to help moisten all the soil around the seeds. But if this water isn't working, I might just skip the seeds for now and just wait till tomorrow to do some planting. So anyway, we'll be back when we start in again. All right, so it's actually been about four days since we got the drip tape done. I didn't anticipate this project taking so long, but the storm I mentioned, like the wind that was supposed to come through, it came through and it was really strong. It was a big storm. Uh, and I'm super glad that I didn't plant any of my plant starts out there uh, because I think that it would have damaged them. And then it rained for three days, so I haven't been able to get out there. It's still really muddy. So I think it's gonna be a little bit messy up there today, but I am kind of determined to get some of the stuff out of the greenhouse. I mean, middle of June and I mean, the greenhouse is still packed with stuff because we're so behind. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna grab a cart and just kind of gather up some things and then I'll go through the stuff that's going in the ground today. I think I'm gonna go with the big cart today. That'll do it for planting supplies. So 
this is the first load and honestly this should just be my goal for the morning just to get these in because I do need to work in biotone and land and sea compost into every area. Uh, we've got some stock that's already wanting to bloom. This is iron apricot and we've got iron blue. So there's 24 plants in there. They look really good. Then we've got the Lysianthus, which I started in January. And it's only this tall. I guess it's a really slow plant. First time I've ever grown this plant, actually. Then there's a Gomfrina called uh, QIS Mix. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but it's looking like it's already wanting to set some buds. And then this is a Paper Daisy. These, this was my second round. So I've got this in a 24 count tray. These are from Gardener's Supply. These are wonderful trays. I love them. They come with that self-watering reservoir that goes beneath them. And then these are the paper daisies I started earlier and potted them up and they're just wild. They've grown so leggy in the greenhouse, which is sad. So I don't know enough about this plant to know, do I cut it back or do I leave it like that? I think I'll leave it like that for today and I'll do a little bit of research, but we do have a bloom and it's really beautiful. These are, I guess, super long lasting and a great dried flower. We've got other buds going on. See, that's what I don't know. I don't want to cut off any blooms. And then this is a white stock right here um, that I started a little bit later than this right here. You can see I also brought the tomato and vegetable. This is a sulfur and pyrethrum based organic spray for aphids because I noticed on this stock right here, we've got just the littlest hint of aphid activity. So I'm gonna put these in the ground and give them a good spray so that we don't deal with any issues. I think everything else is clean but I'll be inspecting it. Looking pretty good. So I'm gonna get these hauled up to the garden. The high today is 66, which is crazy. And I see dark clouds in the distance. I don't know if we're supposed to get more rain. Rain would be okay, I just hope there's no more wind. I think I'm asking for trouble, keeping that flat on the corner. I'm gonna put the camera down so I can actually carry it. Got them kind of laid out here. Boy, this makes me really want to get the rest of the stuff out and planted. I need to amend the soil where I'm going to plant with land and sea and with my biotone fertilizer here, which I did for all the vine crops and they're all coming up, which is exciting. And then I did grab, last minute, grab these tags out of the barn um, and my garden marker here so that I can label all of these properly. They all have labels in their containers, but they're kind of sad like little labels, yeah. <laughs> like a little tiny label, that doesn't do much, I need something bigger. But kind of looking up closer at this paper daisy, so look at how beautiful those are. And look at how leggy those are. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how well they do. That's probably the worst looking ceiling that I have that I started. Hey Russell, what are you doing buddy? Get some loves real quick. And you can see the sweet peas up here. They're just kind of holding because it's been so cool, but they're starting to bulk out. Like you can tell they're putting on new growth. They're putting on a few blooms, um, but I'm hopeful that they'll keep going. I don't know. I just hope it doesn't get so hot so fast because sweet peas don't like that. This experiment's becoming a little bit comical just because of how everything has gone this year and how we kind of were ill-prepared. <laughs> to go into a project like this, like me thinking that I could have this glorious cut flower garden the first year on raw ground without working the soil, without doing anything out here, really. And then not getting water until June 8th, I think it was, that we actually finally got water out here. So anyway, I'm just thankful that there's some green plants out here at this point, and we'll just see how they do. So I'm gonna plant these and then I'll show you what it looks like.
right, they're all in. Looking pretty good. It's a little bit breezy, so I expect that these might wilt down a little bit because they've been in the greenhouse, not super used to being in the direct wind. They are used to the temperatures out here though, so that shouldn't be a problem. And it's gonna warm up here in the next week into the high 90s. So they'll have a couple of cooler days and then they'll go right up into the warms. I also sprayed the white stock for aphids, so that's handled. I checked everything else. Everything else looks really clean. I didn't see any insects at all, but I'll be monitoring that white stock because I know it had just a few little aphids on it, which makes me think I need to check in the greenhouse around it to see if something else, I mean, it's inevitable that something else has it in the greenhouse. Thankfully, aphids are easy to get rid of. It's usually one, one or maybe two treatments to get them completely gone. Um, but I'm really excited about having these in. I mean, I've got a lot more to plant, a lot more. But it's fairly easy. This ground, you know, we had it tilled to get rid of all the gopher mounds. Um, so it's fairly fluffy and easy to plant in, which is really nice. Um, and I did order a bunch of stuff from Gardner Supply, like um, little tunnels and stuff you can put shade cloth on um, or plastic on or whatever. So if it gets really bad windy, I looked at the forecast. It doesn't look like we're supposed to get anything stronger than what it is right now. Um, but I can always construct something really quick. Um, those little hoops, I can't remember what it's called, dang it. Um, we'll put a link down below, maybe a picture on the screen to kind of show you what it looks like. Um, but it's just something you can pop up in case you need a little protection from the harsh sun or from wind or whatnot. And really, I don't know what I'm doing with most of these plants. <laughs> like Lysianthus, paper daisies, the stock, I mean, I've grown stock, but not from seed. Um, Gonfrina, I have some experience, but not this variety. Oh, oh my goodness, Jenny, what are you doing? neighbor puppy here oh look at Russell <laughs> it's okay Russell Jenny hey what are you doing oh my word what do you think of that buddy you don't like dogs do you look at his tail <laughs> Anyway, the only thing I have left to do is I am gonna water these in by hand just so I know that they're nicely settled. Um, and we did, I forgot to mention, we did troubleshoot this drip tape. We ended up taking the pressure reducer off uh, the beginning of the system. We have a pressure reducer on the area with the vine crops and it's working really well. The distribution's really nice. But I think with the amount of drip tape we ran, the pressure reducer wasn't allowing enough water through. Um, so we took that off. So far, everything's running really well. We ran it for like an hour, maybe a little longer than that, just to see what the saturation was like and it was perfect I honestly could plant on either side like, let me show you so you can see I planted in between the drip tape which you know I know that the water coverage is gonna be great there but the water also seeps out on this side and the other side so technically I could do four rows instead of just two but I'm gonna kind of go conservative this year just so I know what I'm doing. And we will be giving you updates throughout the summer. And of course I have a ton more to plant. So you'll be seeing that as well. That way we can kind of monitor the drip tape, let you guys know our experience with it. It just seems like a really like, good solution for this amount of space. Um, overhead water won't work for us because uh, one, I don't want to water the weeds. I want to be very efficient with where we're watering. Uh, I think we are wasting less water by watering this way. Uh, we also have really hard water, so that leaves deposits on leaves and on flower petals, and that's not what we, want, what we want for cut flowers. We want them to look beautiful and pristine. And the fact that we have, like we're gonna have dahlias and sunflowers and some other things and multiple different heights. I don't want anything to be blocked from the water, and I don't want water to be weighing down any blossoms and uh, damaging plants that way. So that's the reason why we don't do overhead here. But regular drip tubing is just so expensive that the drip tape just seemed like the way to go. And that's pretty much it for this video I can't believe it took like four days to complete um, but you know at some point even with the wind and the weird weather we just have to plant we have to get it done my shoes are completely caked with mud right now I'm gonna have to kind of clean off before I go inside uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video kind of seeing another step of this project being done I'm certainly happy to have this part done and to see these plants start to actually flourish because like you, you can see with the paper daisies there they were starting to languish in their plant cans they weren't looking so happy super happy in the greenhouse so I hope they'll be happy now anyway see you guys in the next video